The process that I go through for making a book amounts to creating the book about four times. The first time is in my sketchbook, in which I make little thumbnail drawings, one for each of the pages, and each of these little boxes represents a double page spread. And it's here that I write the book. I write the story, I design the look, the layout. The next stage is to do a full-size dummy. Cut out pieces of paper done in pencil, but to the size and the shape that the book will actually be, with more detail. Each individual page is done on tracing paper to the size that I'm going to do the finished painting. This is the longest stage of doing the book, usually. Um, but it's also fun. This is where I go, okay, what's everything really going to look like? And I can go out and just find as much cool stuff to draw as I can. We met in Parsons School of Design. We sat next to each other and for three, four years we competed. Bitterly. Uh, bitterly, uh, <laughs> true, <laughs> true. It was a bitter competition. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, we fell in love and decided that we couldn't spend any time away from each other. We came on the concept of the third artist, which was a combination of the two of us, who does something that neither one of us would do separately. We once heard a statement, to make life an art, that really intrigued us because it meant make art everything you touch and everything you do. That must be, a, that must be the ideal of life. One of the great joys and big differences about doing the art for Kitten's First Full Moon was that I used a brush because I could just lay down a nice thick line. In the days when I illustrated this book, we weren't allowed to use full color, so we had to separate all our colors out. It's supposed to be my grandfather's story, but actually it's my own story, and I borrow my grandfather's history. As soon as I imagined a young boy laying in bed, waiting to hear the sound of the bells from Santa's sleigh, the story came to me more like a memory than something that I made up. And I used the oils very loosely with a quick brush stroke. I just threw caution to the winds, using every material I felt like. A little bit of chalk, some watercolor, pen and ink, colored pencil, whatever was at hand. I thought and I thought about how to draw a shy penguin. You will eventually spot a boy amid the crowd, and he will start to move through the train station. When I was a kid, I loved being able to find things. And I would think, where has this thing been? I spent a year carving the pictures out of wood. Smoky Night began as a response to the LA riots in 1992. I had vowed that my next book should have a spunky girl as its heroine. There was one line that I liked, and the line was, the cat thought the moon was a bowl of milk this idea of a game that was not always make-believe, that when things happened on the game board, they actually happened. We wanted to portray it so that there are many different cultures, and it's just not Africa as one big place. Hi, this is Rui Shulevitz. My scratchboard pictures are so detailed that I have to look through a magnifying light as I am working. Eddie was not content with the restricted life that he and Al were living. Safety tip number one, keep your shoelaces tied. To all the wolves of the world for lending their good name 
as a tangible symbol for our darkness. It wasn't until September 11, 2001, when the towers went down, that uh, I remembered Philippe's walk and thought this was a story that I wanted to tell. The phone rang on something like two in the morning. I said, oh my God, something terrible must have happened. And it was someone from the Call the Cop committee to tell me that that was a cat won the Call the Cop medal. And we drank half a bottle of champagne at three in the morning.